Hello and welcome to the Watchman on the Wall channel. This prophetic word comes from channel listener John Dwyer, Virginia Beach, Virginia. God's judgments are righteous. Revelation 16, 5. I heard the angel of waters say, You are just, the Holy One, who is and who was, because you have passed judgment on these things. Revelation 19, 2. His judgments are true and just. When I call for judgment on an individual, a people, a city, or a nation, what should I expect from my children? Shouldn't it be the same that I expect from them at all times? Obedience, submission, acceptance, and yes, even rejoicing. Are my commands any different for when I call for judgment than when I call for a blessing? Am I not the same God? Are not my ways always motivated by love? Are not my ways always perfect? Should you not be in full agreement, even praying the same? There is a serious misunderstanding among my people as to the full attributes of love. My love, says the Lord. It is perfect. It is righteous. Its intentions are always pure. Its outcomes are always good. Haven't I demonstrated clearly that when I extend grace to those who are in rebellion, it is always grace that extends beyond the point of where most would demand judgment? So isn't it clear that when I call for judgment, my abundant grace has been consumed There is no other choice than to bring judgment. Love demands it. I demand it. The laws of righteousness and reciprocity demand it. And my children should be in full agreement with it, not in agreement with those who are in open disobedience to me, my words and my commands. Far too often, there were those in the history of man who disagreed with my judgment, who fought against it, who supported those who were chosen to come under it. Far too often in this hour, There are those who demand mercy when I have clearly declared judgment. They put aside my righteous judgment and replace it with theirs. David had his Absalom and his Saul. Ahab had his Ben-Hadad. Saul had his Agag. Solomon had his foreign wives. Samson had his Delilah. I could go on and on. Human mercy is not Holy Spirit mercy. Human mercy is often sympathy for the devil. Human mercy demands everyone goes to heaven. My mercy demands the unrighteous and the unholy are locked out. When I call for judgment, I expect my children to delight in it as much as they delight in me when I call for promotion, for advancement, for abundance, all those things that you refer to as good. But what you have not come to understand is that my judgments are equally as good. What would you think of heaven filled with the abominable, the irreverent, the vile. And yet there are so many today within what is called my church that say it must be so, that my love demands it. They say that Jesus' sacrifice was sufficient to bear all sins. That is absolutely true. But shouldn't love demand a corresponding action? Should I not expect those that benefit from my son's perfect sacrifice to respond with those attitudes, those behaviors, those actions that are pleasing to me? They do not know my love, says the Lord. They do not know me. When I flooded the earth, my grace was tapped out. It had become clear that all the ways of man were entirely self-seeking, very opposed to my love. The situation called for judgment. It was necessary to enable the fulfillment of all righteousness. It was necessary for those who were and who would be true children of mine to be separated as a nation, a holy people, those who accept my love, my judgments, the benefits and responsibilities that come with it. Otherwise, my son's sacrifice would be entirely in vain. You lump evil and good all under one heading, and then you are most deceived. When you embrace that which contradicts the truth of my word, then you set yourselves up for judgment. There is no other choice. I have no other choice. So here's the determination in this matter, says the Lord. I want you to stop praying for those who I have appointed for judgment. In fact, I want you to start praying in agreement with me for my judgment to be expeditious, the fruits of the judgment to be brought forth. I want you to stop praying to me for mercy to those who by virtue of their actions are under judgment. The very act that I have declared judgment upon them should be sufficient enough for you to come into full agreement. The same holds true for a city, a nation, a people, or a culture. I expect you to behave and act like my children. It is time to understand that my judgment is equally righteous with all of my other splendor. Mercy only triumphs over judgment when there's a repentance, true repentance. Let's pray into this word together. 
Heavenly Father, I can almost hear your hear your anguish in this voice, Father. Lord, we we repent, humbly repent to you, Father, for how we have we've mixed up we've mixed up our own reasoning, our own mercy. Human mercy has been mixed with Holy Spirit mercy. Lord, we pray that we get as excited for judgment and correction as we do about promotion and abundance. I think we do in our spirit, but I think our flesh is weak. Lord Jesus, we pray. We pray that this word can can sink down deep into the inside of us. Lord, that we see you as a true righteous God, a true righteous judge. And, And Lord, that we don't try to accommodate sin. We don't try to accommodate rebellion. But Lord, we we pray for true repentance. And then we rejoice, Father. We rejoice, not in a laughing at or a mocking sense, Father, but we rejoice when your judgment comes. Lord, may your judgment come. May your judgment lead others to true repentance, Father. And I thank you that you are righteous. You are righteous. You are righteous. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.